I have found you can find happiness in Blender Style, the show where we discuss an extreme blend of music. On this episode, Nine Inch Nails Broken, released 1992. Cheers, gentlemen. Cheers. <laughs> I've been a huge fan of this album for since the late night, mid nineties, late nineties, I guess. Uh, our friend Chris had a Mustang and would drive us around and listening to this album. And if anyone, uh, you know, asked me what my favorite Nine Shells albums would be, I would always say uh, Broken. But I haven't really gone back and listened to it, so I wanted to know uh, if it still holds up, you know, all these years later. So does it? You'll have to wait for my rating to find out. Oh <laughs> shite, son. Um, Kinky. You guys are both familiar with Nine Inch Nails Broken. Nine Inch Nails for sure, but how yeah. about Broken, the EP? Yeah. It was never like a heavy rotation one for me. But uh, yeah, I've, I know the songs, so I've listened to it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so when I was younger, this was in heavy D rotation for me. Yeah, you didn't like Nine Inch Nails. I fucking hated Nine Inch Nails back then. Did you, you got into Nine Inch Nails at some point? Um, I think actually Nathan kind of got me into Nine Inch Nails more. So like, like Brandon and those guys were really big. Like my brother and all his friends, we made fun of all the time because we called them nailers. We called them nailers, and and this was because they all dressed up like little freaks with their fucking black hair. Which is funny because we were considered the freaks and we made fun of them. We just had long hair. We had yeah. the corn kids when I was. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, Nine Inch Nails was kind of one of those bands that like they were they were there with Marilyn Manson at the time. Um, Yep, and I didn't want any part of that scene. I I wasn't like I still to this day don't like Marilyn Manson. Uh, Nine Inch Nails came along along the time of my we talked about it uh, in an earlier episode of my hair metal days, um, and they just it wasn't there. There was no cool flashy guitar solos. There was no spandex. There was no hairspray. There was no CC Deville. <laughs> um, so I just wasn't really interested in them. That that weird techno techno kind of uh synthesized industrial. industrial sound just it was did raw, you say techno or technological well, i was gonna say yeah like techno the, you know the synthesized technology kind of <laughs> whatever the, the guy that is all about technology is having an electronic time. is the word I yeah electronic <laughs> um it was harsh on my ears at the time mm -hmm. um and i just i never got into it and then uh you know, and everybody was into it. Everybody, like everybody we oh, totally. with, yeah. was into Nine Inch Nails, and I just, I never understood it. I mm -hmm. didn't get it. Um, and I think it wasn't until like we started hanging on a lot um, that we started listening to, um, was it With Teeth mm -hmm. or, or mm -hmm. right before there? And I kind of really got it's into that album. album. It's and, really good. And uh, the album after that. Um, and then kind of went back and kind of gave them a second chance and was kind of like, on that bandwagon of like, no, dude, I've always liked Nine Inch Nails. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> so did you get into Downward Spiral? Yeah, uh, I think I, I got more into Downward Spiral than I got into this album. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's mostly just because I never got back to this one yet. Let's be correct, though. This is an EP. There's yeah. two covers on it. Mm -hmm. There's eight songs, right? Uh, there are, yeah, eight yeah, songs. Eight songs. So like you know, it's like I mean? thirty minutes, thirty one. So minutes. I want to call it like you know an album. It's a release. Yeah. And Nine Inch Nails and discography is, is like it's a f their official second release. Their second like major release. Yeah. yeah. After Pretty Hate Machine. Mm -hmm. But uh, I actually really love the fucking guitar in this. It's very, it's way more riffy mm -hmm. than uh Pretty Hate Machine. Like they it became a to me Pretty Hate Machine was like industrial. This yeah, is industrial for sure. metal for sure, mm -hmm. and the drums too. Oh, for sure, man. This is where just like that heavy down strumming and everything with the guitar tone and stuff. It's definitely more rock influenced. Yeah, the guitar tone on this is probably one, of, and Trent's voice is awesome. Oh um, yeah, I didn't even know how to describe it. I just put v uh, vocals. I just put Trent Reznor. <laughs> that's that's pretty much it. Uh, Trent could make a turd sound great because he has like the the whispery uh speaking parts and then the shouty parts yeah right, the... but it's always super clear yes and it's great you can hear all the lyrics mm -hmm. and all the lyrics are memorable you can put these songs on we and are you all... can move to it 
You know oh, what I yeah, mean? For sure. I mean, if there's something about music that actually gets you moving that, uh, maybe you know, that's why I like, about like it. Uh, March of the Pigs on close on the uh, downward spiral. Yeah. Like and this, this is like foreshadowing what's coming next with Nine Inch Nails, right? I, maybe that's why I like this album because I do like Pretty Hate Machine. You know, mm-hmm. uh, Head Like a Hole is a fucking crazy good song, let's be honest. But this is starting to get into the more metal influenced stuff that Nine Inch Nails, like the darker stuff. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I kind of like this transitional point with Broken. Oh, for sure. I think the lyrics are also great. Uh, so, like, I mean, just. I guess we can just say like Trent Reznor is just a badass. Oh, for sure. The songwriting. Yeah, some yeah. of the lyrics are like, I wish there was something real. I wish there was something true. We all sing that every time mm-hmm. it comes on. You can't not. Yeah, he's great at telling a story or portraying his feeling or emotion through lyrics, which is cool because not a lot of bands can do that. They can put words on a, on a, on a song, mm-hmm. but to actually like portray that through the music as well so like crazy yeah so like a like you know we can compare with like marilyn manson and stuff like that some of these other bands and artists that were going around at the same time like marilyn manson was having a tantrum oh yeah no i don't compare this to marilyn manson at all you kind of have to i do they're they're contemporaries at least but trent reznor walks the line of a tantrum like he's almost too much of a you know baby at some points especially in this era Mm -hmm. you know me personally i like the more cleaned up Trent Reznor, like the newer sure. stuff. Oh, dude, the newer stuff is. And see, that's like, oh, I think they're still coming out with good stuff. Oh, for oh sure. yeah, Nice Nails is great. Um, but yeah, this is this is a good EP and everything. But I just love that it makes you move. I like the guitars. I like how dark it is. Mm-hmm. Lyrics. I think the cover is. Uh, I didn't amazing. like physical very much. Oh, I thought Trent so it's vocals. better than the original for so sure. i i never heard the original until uh earlier today when nate came over and he mentioned he's like did you ever listen to the original i was like no nah, i just kind of took it for what it is i like the original better yeah oh really oh, dude. Yeah. i don't i mean the, i think trent Reznor's yeah, he did a great uh, vocal job. performance is probably the best on this album in this song kind of i like yeah. his like the way he's like this like ooh, yeah getting it dude but uh, yeah but and, and then uh, the original's so- a little better <laughs> no, I don't think so. And then Suck, which is a pig face cover, and he wrote the song. So it's, is it really? It was like a, co- a collaboration, right? Yeah, but he was like part of it, right? And he did yeah. vocals on the original, I believe. He's like, I'll help you guys out as long as I can put it on my own album, too. Well, he's like, I got writing credits. <laughs> it's my song, right? But he yeah, called, I, I, I guess it's not necessary. You're trying to call me on the cover thing. It's a cover, but but it's, it's a the perform. It's a different sounding cover than the original. Mm-hmm. And that one blows the original out wide by far. I don't know if you guys. I listen. never heard the no. original on that one. Dude, this yeah, suck on this is a great, great song. Okay. And when this album came out, it was on CD. So this is the trippy CD trick album. Yeah. Where you get to like track seven, and then it just like skips to track like it's like eight, nine, ten, eleven. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like after a second or whatever. Didn't, like didn't Tool do that on one of their early albums? I don't know. Too. I feel like Nine Snails had a thing where you could like actually like rewind from the first track into like. Uh, negative- Blind Melon did that on Soup as well. Oh, uh, with Galaxy, the first. Yeah, so if you rewind past or is that the past, first two yeah. by four, or whatever? Uh, no, Gal- or I don't remember. But you Galaxy can it's two like by the, four, dude. No, it's like no. the the intro, the hello goodbye intro or whatever. <laughs> Ain't my bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the hello Ain't good- my bitch. The hello goodbye intro, you could actually uh, rewind, and it doesn't work on all CD players, but you could rewind it. And there's like a hidden track uh whoa god or whoa dog so broken had the same thing where you had to like skip through a bunch of garbage yeah. which sucks i'm glad we're beyond that now <laughs> yeah now they got hidden mp3s <laughs> just well nice nails has always done weird like uh leaks of their music like they'll least leak their music on usb drives and yeah. bathrooms and this is kind of also a thing with electronic music there's always remixes there's always read you know remasters there's also like you know hey this riff is in another song but i'm doing it differently and stuff like that did you guys listen to fixed it's the remix of broken it's like the this one's orange that one's blue i I've i uh, heard it i can't recall it i think i might have heard it once i listened to it a couple times the other day yeah i like this one better so what i dislike about this though is like what we're talking about is it kind of is like watching a trailer to a movie that kind of shows too much of the movie. 
Mm -hmm. Like this kind of like shows what was coming next. You know what I mean? And it kind of showed a little too much of it because some of this sounds like actual songs that come in, you know, later albums and stuff, you know, and everything. It's like a trailer for their later stuff. Yeah. So So for what's to come and like, so I just take this as this is a a really good, fun EP. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It's, it's some, that's the experience I think. Yeah. Yeah, It's not like a, you know, an album, especially since there's the intro and then there's the interlude. Mm -hmm. Right. So there's not, there's like 20 minutes of songs on here. It's interesting the whole way through. I love it. I mean, it's nine inch nails, man. I mean, what can we say? Right. So, so my thing was, um, there's a lot of empty space on it. And, to me, it kind of bugs me, um, hmm. like with the interludes and things like that, and the intros and and the outros and stuff. They kind of slow the pace of it down. There's some really great tracks on here. But, Fuck yeah! But I feel like, yeah, but I feel of, like the filler, <laughs> the yeah, filler in between them. Kinda, wish, dude, wish. Oh no! Wish. And last, oh my god! But but what I'm saying is like the the filler in between, kind of slows the pace down. I don't disagree. Um, I it, think it's cool though, like. Especially right before happiness and slavery, you have the chill. I literally write plays quick but takes its time. Yeah, and maybe yeah, that's well, it. You know, he kind of bump and grinds on you. With and some and, of and maybe stuff. that's well, it. The ends with sucks, so that makes some sense, I guess. I, I, <laughs> and so, like, I love you know. There's not a lot here, but for the sliver of pie that I'm getting, it's scrumptious. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, it's like a but perfect you're just amount. Yeah, a, a taste. and we get a couple good covers. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. honestly, like this is like a novella, right? It just it's snappy, works really well. Yeah, uh, but like it, but it's an EP, and I can't really rate it so high on the spectrum of Nine Inch Nails because I'm such a you know big Nine Inch Nails fan, but I would rate this a four point three. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I think this is you know it's good. It's enjoyable, and I'll I'll always go back and I'll listen to this. Okay, that's pretty good. Like so so me not being a huge Nine Inch Nails or not necessarily not being a huge Nine Inch Nails fan, but a huge Nine Inch Nails earlier work fan. Uh, I think their new stuff is amazing i love oh, it yeah. uh but for this one i gave it a 3.2 out of 5 um it's grown on me but i'm still just not quite there with it i really think that they're coming around i think that i think this album plays immature and maybe it was just because of the age i was when it came out i think it's really almost immature sounding i agree with you 100 percent. um and they haven't fine-tuned themselves yet and I think this was just, you know, let's throw stuff it's out. It's a verge there. of a tantrum. It kind of is. Um, but yeah, 3.2 for me. Ah, I think you, like, sorry, but I think you just hit it spot on. Mm-hmm. I think Trent Reznor, the more cleaner Trent Reznor. The more mature the more he's more gotten. Ma- yeah, for sure. I think it's, I'm in love with it. So you think this stuff's too immature? No, I don't think it's too immature. I rated it a 4.1. Yeah, it just, it just right, plays okay. immature but in their catalog. within the career more. of Nine Inch Nails... I like a more cleaner, more focused, even atmospheric, symphonic, not symphonic, but synth wise. Like, I love that stuff. There's that more. laser focus that he has now. Yeah. Like, in everything that he does, like, there's, there's an, there's a exact spot where he wants to take you with it. And that journey's there from the beginning to the end. Um, where I, this is kind of a little, little all over the place. So I, I agree with what you're saying, but they're, the newer stuff, which I'm a big fan of, I love all Nine Inch Nails. Mm-hmm. It like there's it lacks that kind of intensity and like the it's abrasive. less guitar driven. It, it's la- la- it, yeah, it lacks la- the rawness. The rawness, yeah. yeah. And that's kind of why I like a Broken. Okay. So I give Broken a four point two out of five. Damn. It's, nice. This is a killer EP. It's still my favorite Nine Inch Nails release. Yeah. You know, really. We'll, we'll probably re- review more on this show, and oh, that might man. change. But for now, it's still my favorite. Um, and it holds up. It fucking holds up. This is a killer, nice. killer EP. No, no doubt. Sixteen-year-old me would be pissed off that I even liked it. Uh, I always like <laughs> broken though. Like driving around in Chris's car. Yeah. To Magic Mountain, he's playing broken the whole with, time with no subs and just all fucking high end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sound like shit. Over, so like this is where noises. it comes into like when this stuff was out. Like uh, this was still creepy to me. This was still this yeah. is not mainstream to me. Mm-hmm. Because I, you know, was probably like a, it just wasn't mainstream to me around that time. It's crazy to think about that too, because like you grew up in Tachapi, um, and this wasn't 
mainstream for you around that time. This was so mainstream for everybody in Taft, I think. Mm -hmm. I could not avoid Nine Inch Nails and Marilyn Manson. Yeah, it's and crazy. And like corn. corn not, our friends didn't listen to corn so much, but I, I could not avoid fucking Marilyn Manson. Everywhere I went, we were listening to yeah, fucking and Portrait it used of to a piss me off. And it would drive me nuts, dude. Mm -hmm. I, and maybe that's it. Maybe that's the, the thing. Like that album and this album and yeah, the I've Downward Spiral, I feel like, were outplayed. Same with uh, Sublime, 40 Ounces I was going to say Sublime. Is and the same Misfits, thing. American Psycho. And same with Misfits. I didn't really... Fuck. I, I did find an appreciation for Sublime later, right? Yeah, I did too. And, same with Misfits. And same for, for me, Marilyn Manson. Only Portrait, though. Okay. And like really? Anna, Antichrist Superstar. But... So I, I love Marilyn Manson. Uh, Sublime uh, like was one of those bands that like introed me to a lot of stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, what was the other one you guys brought up? The misfits? misfits, the misfits. You know what I mean? Like, that shit was my jam. You know, <laughs> System of a Down was another one I couldn't avoid. Yeah, I'm like, I get it. Sweet pea's cool, whatever. It's a sweet pea. <laughs> this is Blender Style. That was Nine Inch Nails. Broken. Pigs get what pigs deserve. <laughs> 